Bloodhaven, north of Gotham City. As cities went, Bloodhaven made Gotham look like Metropolis. The streets were filthier, the air was dirtier, the cops were more brutal and corrupt. Graffiti spread like fungus over the city's narrow alleys and empty storefronts. Steel shutters and iron bars guarded every home and business, a necessary precaution in the dog-eat-dog -dog environment of this urban cesspool. Litter clotted the streets and sidewalks. Broken windows went unrepaired. Drug dealers and prostitutes flaunted their wares openly, provided they had bribed all the right people. But one young man, raised in the bright colors and garish make-believe of the circus, still hoped to save the city from itself, or at least make a difference. Dick Grayson, the first person to be known as Robin the Boy Wonder, now called himself Nightwing. The bat-shaped mask affixed to his face and the somber tones of his blue and black uniform paid tribute to his fearsome mentor, even though Nightwing had long since established an adult identity of his own. A fetid breeze rustled his dark hair as he stood at the edge of a tar-papered rooftop looking out over the city. Night had fallen on Bloodhaven, bringing out the city's many nocturnal predators. The sounds of the city drifted up from the streets below. No screams or gunfire yet. It was a quiet night in the Haven. I wonder if everyone is indoors watching the news. Maybe everyone is waiting out the end of the world. He turned away from the ledge to face the trio of women who had just arrived in the city to bid him farewell. Amidst the grime and decay of Bloodhaven, the three beauties stood out like angels from a higher realm, which, in a way, they were. In fact, Troya, Starfire, and Supergirl had all grown up in outer space, thousands of light years from Earth. I'm glad we managed to find you tonight. I didn't want to leave without saying goodbye. Donna was one of his oldest friends. As the original Wonder Girl, she had helped him found the first grouping of the Teen Titans years ago, back when he was still calling himself Robin. Now, grown into a strong and confident woman, she went by the name Troya. The stars themselves glittered in her lustrous black hair and shimmering black leotard. A futuristic silver orb hovered near her shoulder. Nightwing recognized the travel sphere as an artifact of New Cronus, the distant world in which Donna had been reared by the titans of Greek mythology. So you're really going to go? Uh-huh. Before they fled this reality, the titans of myth warned that the end of the universe was coming, and now that prophecy seems to be coming true. Deep in space, the Ranians and Thanagarians are at war. Near the center of the conflict is a mysterious cosmic storm, an immense rift in the very fabric of the space-time continuum that is growing larger with each passing second. Each side in the war blames the other for the cataclysm, but I fear that soon they will all be fighting merely to survive. If something isn't done soon, if we don't find a way to quell the storm, it could mean the end of the universe as we know it. That's why I'm gathering heroes to go with me into space to cope with the crisis before it's too late. So who are you taking? Firestorm, Jade, Cyborg, Animal Man, Red Tornado Shift, Alan Scott. And Cory and Kara, of course. Sounds like a good crew. I'm so flattered that Donna thought of me. The willowy blonde was Superman's cousin from the planet Krypton, only recently arrived on Earth. Supergirl wore a two-piece version of her cousin's famous costume, but with a miniskirt instead of leggings. My cousin's not exactly thrilled with the idea, but hey, saving the universe sounds good to me. Trust me, I know all about overprotective guardians. Old memories surfaced with unexpected force as the third woman stepped forward. Unlike Supergirl, whose thoroughly human appearance belied her extraterrestrial origins, there was no mistaking Starfire's exotic alien appearance. Her emerald eyes lacked any visible pupils or whites. Flawless orange skin was amply exposed by her skimpy harness, which mostly consisted of a few strategically placed purple straps. Modesty was a human virtue that Coriander, warrior princess of Tamaran, had never quite seen the point of. Dick. Cory hesitated, uncertain what to say. They had been lovers once, back when they had both served in the Teen Titans together. In truth, she had been his first real love. This planet has become a dangerous place. Please take care of yourself while we are away. She leaned forward to place a tender kiss upon his lips. Nightwing kissed her back, surrendering to the moment. This wasn't going to make saying goodbye any easier. He pulled away. 
You too, Corey. I need to catch a train to New York. There's a big arms deal going down between the Carlino family and the local mob. I have to track down an informant who's gone to ground somewhere in the Bronx. Troya took the hint. We won't keep you then. She glanced at the metal globe floating beside her. Sphere, take us to New Cronus. The silver orb glowed brightly, enveloping the three superheroines in a preternatural ball of light. Goodbye, Dick. The three young women disappeared from sight. The orb blasted into space like a meteor in reverse. Godspeed. Nightwing found himself alone on the rooftop. He wondered if he would ever see any of the three women again. Donna had seemed convinced that the rift in space posed a deadly threat to all of creation. What if it was more than her team could handle? Help! Help! Somebody help me! The cry came from a couple of blocks away. Nightwing responded instantly. So much for my quiet evening. He hurled himself into the air. <laughs>